He's scanning the Matalakevs with his binoculars. Oh, he recognizes hippies from the many nations. Oh, bonfire still going. Oh, there's a, a British freak building a bamboo and, and thatched uh, awning to shield his, his script entrance. I mean, oh, it gets really hot here, but just 10 in the morning. And oh, there goes the by a zone with his ivory knob walking stick and three mules trailing him behind. Three buffed up crypt disciples. Mm hmm. Oh, they're so stoned already by now. Carrying burlap bags full of, you know what? Uh, yeah, he, as Fink stands there, uh, solemnly staring out. The sea sparkles to the pyramids of Egypt. Oh, the wind blows. Well, it breathes. <laughs> Flower patterns across the sea surface. He sniffs the wind. It's coming off northern Africa. Oh. He's feeling right now that he is a celestial true prince. Self-portrait. An indelible, perfect photograph shall remain an indestructible seed of truth within his immortal soul until it fades and ochres into dust. Sphinx bows reverently to the sea. His morning meditation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now absolutely fulfilled. He understands the patterns on the water, the surface patterns, the hidden depths of his past lives. He understands the treachery of man in the catacombs of the dead. Well, 12 noon, he runs, a, you know, on time. He's a kind of, kind of a Swiss train in his head. It's exactly 12 noon. Uh, he goes into Yorgos Cafe. Uh, Yorgos, uh, well, in the history, Yorgos was the octopus hunter that helped Aphrodite nurse uh, Fabius Spartacus back to life. Well, his descendants, they now run this cafe, humble grocery and cafe, but beautiful, oh, overlooking Matala Beach. And the descendants of uh, Zorba, the beekeeper, bee they rent Swedish mopeds. Yeah, around the corner. Huh? I mean, Matala is a small village. It's a population, 95. It's gone from 4 to 95 through the centuries. Uh, so yeah, it's only three straits. And... Um, from town, there's a bus. It goes 17 kilometers up. Switch back to the Feistos archaeological site. Yeah, there's a lot of rocks there. I would go to the Minoan Palace if I had to choose. Get up to date with the Minotaur. Not a centaur, a Minotaur. Better get out your smartphone on that, huh? Yeah, it goes up the mountains and, and then to Heraklion, takes a couple hours. Quaint, undiscovered motto. It, it's... Uh, <sighs> refreshingly open to the sky. Spacious. A petite hamlet, airy. Unlike those claustrophobic twisting lanes of Sponge Island, Mykonos... Party Animal World Headquarters. <laughs> Lindos? Well, the cafe tables at Yorgos, you know, shaded by grapevines. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, these thin wooden trellises. It's kind of like a natural shade. And uh, Yorgos' uh, wife, she she's collected uh, the spent casings from Nazi bombshells, and she turns them upside down. So the fins are facing up, and she plants flowers in them. Yeah. Uh, 
cheerful flower stands. Sphinx Rasta then enjoys seaside table, chanting cafe overlooking the beach. Sphinx, he crumbles, oh, this, this Greek goat feta, you know, into Greek yogurt. I mean, everything's Greek here. You don't have to go to Greek town in Detroit or you just, you're in it. You're living in a Greek salad, you know. Uh, and he spoon feeds his tamed and thankfully untamable nymph. Well, that's when Medusa walks into the cafe <laughs> with her baby, born in, in the caves. Another buys on a uh, harem crypt uh, devotee. Oh, she gives the to Sphinx and Rasta, and she scores a basket of fresh baked monastery bread. Oh, you got to smell this stuff. It's so good. Fresh baked in the morning from the monastery up at Tombakian nearby, 17 kilometers. Uh, still warm. Wheat loaves constellated with the seeds of opium. Ooh, I'll take some of that. Butter, honey. Nescafe. Oh, set me up. I'm hungry. <laughs> 